Okay, so we have to have a preface this week because so many people sent me this story. Uh oh. And I'm not going to use it just yet. Uh oh. There is a girl who allegedly gave herself a third boob. Oh. Okay. Yeah. She, she, something, she allegedly has given herself three boobs as in total recall. And there's a reason I'm not using this story because. How does that work? Plastic surgery. Well, yeah, but. I know. Like regular breast implants are they're just putting something behind. Yes. The fat that you already have because breasts are made of fat, basically. Sorry to break it to you, boys. <laughs> there's no fat in sternum. Like when I knock on that, it sounds hollow. Exactly. So because it, I have no heart. <laughs> but there's nothing to build. There's no there there. And that's that's part of why we're not using it because Snopes looked at this. The the I I research people. I had to research three boob lady for my show for my job. I had to go online and look up. Woman with three boobs, the plausibility of having a third boob. And Snope said, we're not sure. We can't say for sure. And you know what? I have a bizarre integrity so that I'm not going to put a story on my show about a third boob unless I'm sure yes. there's, there's, yeah. How weird we're is my be life? We're not we're not reporting on a third boob until we fondled it personally. How weird is my fucking life? Integrity. I don't know. On my on my camera, you're on like a Michael Bay Dutch angle. I know because this damn camera will never stay. It's very arty. It's, it's the only film term I know is Dutch angle. You hang out with Kyle, and all you know is Dutch angle. Okay, <laughs> Kyle. Talks about like French art cinema <laughs> and uses like beyond SAT words. So mostly I'm just trying to keep up. Well, in any event, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but we will not be covering the third boob until and unless it is confirmed. Until we have seen it and touched it. Well, not touched it. I just want some honest to God, this is not some Photoshop shit, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to know how that's physically possible because, like I said, there's no there there. <sighs> and you know what? We have, I, I'm pleased to say, I, I feel like I have more integrity than all the, what, the news sites that ran with this fucking story. They're like, all the guys go with third titty! You know, journalism just ain't what it used to be, is it? No. Like, they'll just take anything that's making the rounds on Twitter and call it news. There's, there's a third titty? Oh my mm. god, print that shit! It used to be you had to verify things, to get sources. Now it's just, well, it's on Twitter, they're going to report it before we do, so put it up there. And I know I have let some things go through, slip through the cracks. God, that just oh, and they love wrong. to tell us they when love we to fall for a hoax. So I have. They love to tell us. So don't y'all be be going. Where my third titty? You're not getting it tonight because I want to be just. God damn it! There, there's there's no dignity here. There's um. So yeah. Did we ever determine whether the Mark Wahlberg third nipple urban legend was true? I haven't even heard that one. We didn't know that one? Yeah, suppose I, I don't know if it's true or not. If it's been debunked by now, but supposedly Mark Wahlberg has a nipple. It's what helps him tell fortunes. <laughs> <laughs> 90s kid jokes. Oh, I remember that movie. I liked that movie, even though it's it's not a very good movie, but I like that movie. Alright, so with that, sorry to to burst your boobies. Um, I'm sorry. That was, that was awful. We should get to 
Luckily, I have Captain America protecting me. I'm shielded. Oh. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for the listen. We like to call What crazy. the Fuck is Wrong with You? And this one, this is actually kind I'm of confirmed. Um, you remember a while back we had the story about the guy trying to get into the White House naked, and then apparently a guy in a Pikachu hat tried to get into the climb the fence and tried to get in the White House. And this week, this shit happened again. And I'm sorry, this is probably Secret pro- Service is kind of asleep on the job. Well, you know, they were missing missing a very crucial part of their security. I think if you live in the United States of America, this is one of the worst headlines you will ever see in your life. White House will now lock the front door. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> The White House on Monday said it would do what most homeowners pr- practice to secure their property. Lock the front door. We don't lock the door on the White House. We do not lock the front door on the White House. <laughs> There's some reasonably important people in there. We don't lock the front door. The White House on Monday, uh, after Friday night's incident, when the door is not in use, it will be secured, said White House Press Ter- Secretary Josh Ernest. That's got to be the best press secretary name ever. Josh Ernest. An Iraq War veteran armed with a knife managed to scale the outer fence of the White House Friday night and make it through the North Portico doors near the residence of the first family. One of these guys had like 800 rounds of ammo in his car at the time. Mm. One of these three dudes that broke into the White House this week because the Secret Service is apparently just jerking off on the front lawn. I know! I... I cannot sleep until I check and make sure that my front door is locked. This is just what? Do you know when I lived alone, I actually slept a whole night not realizing that my door was not only unlocked, but six inches ajar. I like came in from doing laundry or something, didn't notice the door never closed all the way, went to sleep. And the next morning I'm like, why is my door open? And realized it had been open all night. And, and yeah, and the first thing you do when you... I've done that. I've done that shit. And the first thing you do like is... I definitely shouldn't should have been murdered. Yeah, you check every fucking thing in the house. You're like, I mean, holy shit. I'm looking in the closet for, like, monsters and shit. I'm in my 30s. I'm looking for monsters in my fucking closet. Fortunately, I own pretty much not a thing worth stealing, except maybe my, my iMac. Which, if you'd have to be a hipster burglar, I guess. <laughs> More, I was more worried about the fact that I probably should have been murdered in my sleep for that level of stupidity. I'm just picturing the sit down for this one with the Secret Service. Okay, guys, let's go over our plans. What can we do to improve? Sir, can we lock the door? <laughs> well, let's You're going crazy. places, Johnson. You're going places. <laughs> lock the French. Jesus Christ. This is the Secret Service. This is these are the people who are ostensibly there to keep our, our leaders safe from harm and oh. it's, it's amazing we have a president at all. <laughs> well, and also, like, I think I've mentioned this before, the first year of the Obama presidency, Joe Biden's motorcade was getting car wrecks literally like once a week. It became a thing. Like, Wonkett was reporting on it constantly. Like, I Joe Biden's vice presidential motorcade was getting in constant car accidents. Why? They let him drive? I don't know. <laughs> Whoever was carting Joe Biden around was apparently a shit driver. And they were just getting in car wrecks all the time. So, like... What's that driver's name? Uh, something Magoo. If you really wanted to be Fox Mulder about this... You could go all Secret <laughs> Service conspiracy, conspiracy to take out the Obama administration and give us President Boner. Uh, I'm not saying. I'm just saying. It's been like eight years of Secret Service having accidents. 
Well, speaking of security, our next one is uh, comes from uh, JFK. And with as many times as we have stories of the TSA doing shit wrong, we finally have one of them doing something right. I'm going to get in a lot of trouble for that. People are going to think I honestly think the uh, Secret Service wants to kill the president. I don't. It's conspiracy. She's 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 trying to make conspiracy about a conspiracy. <laughs> Got to go deeper. Um, have you ever? Ha, ha, I have done this. We, we, we have you ever left something in your luggage while you're about to fly, and the Secret Service comes up to you, is like, "Excuse me, excuse me, is this oh, your luggage?" Not, not the Secret Service. Well, not Secret Service. Your Sorry. luggage. <laughs> Why did you but, leave in your luggage in manifesto? I left a present in my bag. He was a little upset. No, the TSA, the TSA, they come, to, they're all serious. You're like, is this your luggage? Is this, is this your fucking luggage? I'm like, yes. The shampoo is too big. They do that shit. They get all serious. But. They're bringing it up in the chat. I've told you the time I tried to get through TSA with a fake lighter, with a joke lighter in my bag. Yeah. And shocked the TSA agent and really thought I was spending the rest of my life in Gitmo. Well, you aren't, but this woman may, and with good reason. Woman's luggage contained two guns, 350 rounds of ammo, and 58 bricks of pot. Oh. Canadian woman trying to fly out of JFK Airport yesterday did not make her flight due to some prohibited items turned up in her luggage, namely guns, ammo, and a Abundant supply of marijuana. Nisha McPherson, who hails from Ontario, was arrested by Port Authority police after her bags were inspected prior to boarding her flight for Barbados. According to TSA, the officer saw the suitcases were jam-packed with cans and jam-packed with cans and boxes for baby wipes, coffee, floor dusting sheets, lemonade mix, iced tea mix, a box of cat litter, and a box of laundry tablets. But none of those boxes contained the, or cans contained the products and the labels. Uh -huh. TSA officers allegedly found two disassembled 40 caliber handguns, 350 rounds of ammunition, four magazines for the guns, and 58 bricks of marijuana, totaling 33 pounds, all artfully concealed in the boxes, tubs, and cans of everyday household products. I mean, that's clever and all, but they x-ray the luggage. Yeah, that's like the... And contrary to popular belief, an x-ray machine can see through cardboard. That technology has come a long way. You can see right through cardboard. I, I, I want to know what party this lady was going to, because it sounds amazing. Weeds breaking bad crossover? Mother... Was she, was she going to take over? <laughs> Apparently. This is like an like a civilian invasion. Like her own this was her own private little attempt to usurp Barbados. Well, I mean, probably not cuz she's Canadian. And why are you bringing weed to the Bahamas? Yeah, that's usually where you get it. They already have it. They have a lot of it and I promise you if you're from Canada, they got better shit. They got it's way kind of like, better shit. It's kind of like flying to Colorado and packing snow. <laughs> 350 rounds of ammunition. I'm intrigued to hear what her travel plans were. That's the end of a Die Hard movie right there. Well, the thing is, if you smoke that much weed, you don't want to use 350 rounds of ammunition. Can, can you even load 350 <laughs> rounds of ammunition? If you smoke that much weed, you're, you're gonna just eating a bag of Cheetos and going to sleep. Okay, I know this part goes into this part, but I'm not clear how... Or I'm not even... You know, if I had a nickel for every time I heard that. <laughs> That's when you know the date's over. <laughs> That's why I'm single. <laughs> no, it's, nah, just Jesus Christ. That is so... And the... I Okay, what's getting me here is that she's using the cat litter boxes and the coffee boxes... 
Typically, here's how it goes in drug smuggling. I should know this, but I do. You use these things because supposedly the smell of coffee and cat litter and lemon wipes and all that stuff disguises it from the dogs. Really? Yes, but you actually have to have the coffee and the cat litter and the wipes, not just the containers they go in. <laughs> You're missing a crucial part of the equipment. <laughs> That's supposed to hide the odor. Yeah, but then the bag would weigh over 50 pounds and they charge us. <laughs> Travel's a motherfucker these days, man. Oh, God. You know what? People are pointing out the weed and the coffee. If you have weed and coffee, why are you leaving home? To go... Do weed and drink coffee on a beautiful Bahamian beach and not in Canada. Okay, but the guns here. The guns. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, there's no... People keep like, where's the kitty? Bridget's sleeping in my nephew's room. Right. She's his kitty. So sometimes she sleeps with him. So she's not here. I'm sorry. I posted a picture of her on Twitter to hold you over. Mm. But like, I've seen like five. Where's the kitty? It's like kitty porn. I... They... They don't give a fuck about me anymore. They're just oh, like, where's they the love, cat? We love you, Tara. Make the cat play fetch. Make the cat do things. Where's the cat? I have no cat. Just bad jokes. Have Have uh, you seen um, the Oculus Rift? You may Is that a horror movie. You may be aware of it. It's Have you ever seen? It's a new VR type helmet for games. Um, in fact, Facebook bought it for like a billion dollars. Is VR still a thing? Apparently, yeah, we're still trying. Um, I thought that ended with that Russell Crowe movie. <laughs> we're still trying. Oh, yeah, Virtuosity. I remember that one. That was a good fucking crazy movie. It was just Russell Crowe losing his damn mind. It was fun. If you haven't seen Virtuosity, you should. It's not a very good movie. It's hilariously bad. Denzel and Russell Crowe. One of Crow. his first big movies. Yes. It's hilarious. Um... Well, someone on Kickstarter, because the, the VR thing is still going, someone on Kickstarter has a new product that they think will serve this need for a new VR helmet in the stupidest way possible. Now you can attach your iPad directly to your face to experience virtual reality. What? AirVR wants to turn your iPad mini and iPhone 6 Plus. Oh, I lied. She's here. Oh, there she is. Well, she's crawling up my chair. Wants to turn these new portable, portable virtual reality goggles. Hi. We missed you, Sam. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. The iPad has been adapted to all sorts of intriguing and surprising purposes over the years, including recently a sex toy. Meanwhile, a number of enterprising organizations and individuals have sought to create a makeshift set of virtual reality goggles out of people's readily available mobile devices. Look at the picture. My God, the picture on this. Look at this. What does it look like? It looks like something. It looks like a hipster. No. This, ladies and gentlemen, what you're seeing right here is this is this is not even the hipster's final form. What am I thinking of? It's not like the Peter Gabriel video where the people had TVs for faces. I I'm thinking of some like horrible I, I can't get to it though. People are saying people on the channel say this is exactly as stupid as I thought it would be. I mean, do you want to sit around like that? And yeah, I mean, Jesus Christ. Oh God, oh God, there's an even more hipstery picture. Look at this. Look at this. The one at the bottom. That is everything hipster. Everything. This, oh my God, have mercy. You know what concerns me is that person's outdoors. <laughs> Do 
that person shouldn't be outdoors. People could can't... see me and see how cool I am with my VR goggles. He can't see where he's going. No, you know he can see where he's going because you know what he's doing? He's got the camera on the iPad showing him the world in virtual reality. But you could just have yes, Dick. Reality, <laughs> reality. <laughs> reality. <laughs> reality. <laughs> Oh, do you know how much you're charging? There's a there's a William Gibson novel novel where uh, they uh, they do what's called locative art, and you put on this special headdress, and it superimposes an image over a scene. And like one of the examples they use is you go to the the Viper Room, and you put on the headdress, and it it recreates River Phoenix's death on that spot for you in virtual reality. Jesus Christ. Um, so a lot of people do like his, it, and it's, it seems kind of like this, like you're walking around in a hyper, a hyper reality. Except with, like, you look all like sorts an, of shit superimposed on it. Except you look like an idiot. Well, yeah, there is that. You know how much it's you're charging? why that William Gibson book hasn't been made into a movie. They're charging $50 for this. And it isn't even out yet. They're trying to get people to kickstart this. We're in the wrong line of work, man. Fifty dollars. We make people look like idiots for free. <laughs> so what you're saying is we should get them to pay us to make them look like idiots. Yes. Do you hear her purring? I cannot. She's purring her little face off. I hear her a little bit. She's like, I missed you, Internet. Bring me chicken. Send chicken. I don't know my address, but send chicken. Oh my god, fifty dollars! And you know, it's not even all that complicated. Okay, look what it is. It's just a pair of magnifying lenses. You can see that on the screen. It's just a pair of magnifying lenses and a head strap off some kid's night brace. Yes. This is. Jesus Christ. Uh. Well, hey. So I, I really didn't know virtual reality was still a thing. I thought we were past that. Nope, still a thing. But hey, if you want someone making themselves look like an idiot for free, um, we got one. This is from Oklahoma City. Oklahoma is okay. No, it's not. Oklahoma. Do you remember Anthony Clark? No, I don't. He was a comedian. He did this whole routine in Oklahoma. Did it include washing comedian. himself in public in mayonnaise? No, he wasn't a performance artist. One man was arrested for use mayonnaise to wash himself in a public fountain. Oklahoma police say they received complaints about the man who was said to be bathing at Reno and Mickey Mantle. Those are streets, not people. Although that would be even more amazing. We can somehow involve Mickey Mantle in this. Uh, officers reported finding Jorge Arturo Perez, 23, soaking wet and breathing hard in the city fountain. Are we sure it was Manny's? Paris question. <laughs> Paris told police he was taking a bath in the fountain and was washing his hair with mayonnaise. Manny's is really good for your hair, though. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> you use that as a deep treatment. You put it in... You like wrap your hair in saran wrap and put a hair dryer on it for like 20 minutes. You get the most amazing shiny hair because it's eggs and oil. But are you supposed to do it in the public fountain? I mean, no. Generally, mm. you would do that at home. In the fountain. This was not a spur of the moment thing because he had to go and get the mayonnaise. This was a plan. Yeah. This was an afternoon. Bridget, you're blocking me. This was today. I'm going out and getting a tub of... Hello, Bridget. She has to be all up in our business. Mm -hmm. She's like, today I'm going out and buying a tub of mayonnaise and publicly putting that shit in my hair while naked. Maybe he was trying to give 
beauty classes. Maybe it was like, gather around, ladies, and I will show you the secrets to my flowing locks. Except his hair don't look all that good. Well, because he didn't get to finish the season. <laughs> they arrested him. Of course, that's it. Or he fucked up and used Miracle Whip. And man, does he look pissed about it. It's like, man. Oh, one man wanted to. Can't a man wash his hair in mayonnaise in public anymore? I thought this was America. <laughs> I thought this was land of free. It's not, not. Thank you, Bridget, for showing everyone your butt up close. Consider it. Well, at least she isn't showing us her butthole. That's what cats do. No, yeah, she likes to stick that in my face while I'm sleeping. They're like, you know, oh, you like me, you like me, and now here's my butthole. Yeah, this is the kind of spa treatment you generate. I mean, most spa treatments are the kind of spa treatment you do at home. How does your, how do you think, how do you end up in that situation and not think, you know what, I've lost my fucking mind? How does this seem reasonable? It's like that line from Seven. Do you just sit around covering yourself in peanut butter, jerking off to guns and ammo, thinking, man, I'm really fucking crazy? Oh, are you serious? They think I'm kidding about the mayonnaise for your hair. I'm not. Google it. Oh, great. Now we're going to. I'm not kidding. <sighs> oh, and. It's and better than bull semen. We covered bull semen as a hair treatment uh, years ago. Cypher points out yeah, the water fountain is full of, of pigeon shit and urine. Which, that's probably not so good for your hair. Well, we did the bird shit. Yeah, patient. the bird shit. Uh, so the secret to beauty, it really is a fountain of youth. And pigeon shit. Weirdly, and most of the stuff that comes out of that fountain is white and creamy. Uh, oh, God. Let's let's shuffle on. Um, Because let me tell you the beauty uses for semen sometimes. Do you have those friends that you just will not be drunk around because it's. I have friends who I, I know I can be drunk around because if I get a really bad idea, they'll stop me. And then there are those friends if I'm drunk around and I get a really bad idea, they'll encourage me. I'm usually the one giving out the bad ideas. So, OK, I shouldn't be drunk around you. Good to know. I'll be like, actually. You are Jesus. You should go save those people. Gee, have you by chance been in uh, Korea in the last week? Uh-oh. U.S. man tried to swim to North Korea to meet Kim Jong-un. South Korean border guards arrested an American man who they believe was attempting to swim across a river to rival North Korea, a South Korea... Uh, the uh, defense official said Wednesday, the man was apprehended Tuesday night while tr lying on the bank of the Han River in restricted military area near the border. Um, well, that's not saying much. All of South Korea is a restricted military area. The man told investigators he tried to go to North Korea to meet leader Kim Jong-un. And here's the, the, the if you go down a bit, you'll find out what happened. Um, Has it gotten so bad for Dennis Rodman that he can't just buy a plane ticket anymore? Um, that joke, <sighs> tank. But just it. Uh, apparently, this has also happened before. Um, a man named Evan C. Hunziker apparently made the swim on a drunken dare, trying to enter a North Korea. Named what? Hunziker. Evan C. Hunziker. This happened in '96. He tried to swim because someone dared him to swim to North Korea while he was drunk, and he did it. I'm going to put that in my pocket for next time somebody gullible gets drunk. I'm going to be like, you know what you should do? You should swim in North Korea. This guy, he he wanted to meet Kim Jong-un. I mean, sure. Dude, there's <laughs> autographs that are hard to get because... It's choice. And then there are just some, some autographs you got to let go. You gotta, you gotta, don't go to, don't go to North Korea. Just don't go there. 
It's it's bad. It's it's like crazy medieval 1984 Orwellian shit going on there. Don't go there. What? Maybe Kim Jong Un's actually a bitchin' dude, and we just don't know. I want to party with him, man. He's awesome. Cause they don't play. Uh, apparently, um, they have they haven't named. No, they names. just sent him someone to six years of hard labor because they thought he might say bad things about them when he came home. So the man, aged around twenty nine, is a computer repairman from Texas. This is what you do on your holiday. <laughs> Motherfucker, I'd go to Rio and shit. I mean, there are more traditional vacation destinations for sure. But come on, like, how much of a fucking boss are you if you come back from vacation? Hey, hey, Bill, what did you do on vacation? Oh, you know, I took the kids to Disney World. What did you do? Swam in North Korea. Me and Kim Jong-un are bros now. Solve that whole dictatorship thing. He's going to back off. Yeah, that's not how that works. It's he doesn't just need a good talking to. But it could be. No, he You don't know. I do Have you know. met Kim Jong un? No, I do know. Exactly. He's crazy. Maybe he just needs hugs. He was raised crazy. He exactly. Was, he comes maybe, from a long line of crazy. Maybe he just needs love. And this man wanted to give it to him. And world peace has now been foiled. You don't know. Do you know? Can you tell the future? Do you have a third nipple? I don't think so. I mean, that last part, maybe you do. I don't know. I'm just saying. Terry, you realize you just asked me on the internet if I had a third nipple. Yeah. This this was a reasonable course of action. It's hardly the craziest thing I've said on this program. Pot, yeah. Not even in the top ten. Okay. We should do a top ten. <laughs> top ten craziest shit we've said on the... <sighs> yes, Bridget, I see you. I know. So, uh, I again, I normally don't do stories where people get hurt. Mm -hmm. This last one does have minor injuries. But I'm including it because these idiots have pissed me off so terribly. And the injuries were to themselves... Non-life-threatening injuries, minor. So, you know what? I'm not feeling a lot of sympathy here. Especially how they came about them. <sighs> Armpit hair fire causes crash that injures teens. What? Boise, Idaho. And look, kids, how well, fucked right, up that car is. Yeah, look how fucked up that car is. They fucked it. They're, they're non-life-threatening injuries, so nobody died. Teenager crashed his SUV Sunday morning after a passenger used a lighter to set his armpit hair on fire. Crash happened 5.30 a.m. on Columbia Roads between Meridian and Linder Road. 18-year-old uh, Tristan Meyer was driving when his front seat passenger, a 16-year-old boy, set Meyer's armpit hair on fire. Driver lost control of the Bronco. Rolling the video, two girls in the backseat, age 15 and 16, were thrown from the vehicle. Meyer's, his front seat passenger, and a 17-year-old boy remained in the vehicle. None of the teens were wearing seat belts. Three of the teens taken to local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Meyer's first said he'd swerved to avoid an animal... But the truth emerged after deputies talked to all the teens. God, what that must smell like. <laughs> That's where you go. Because burning hair is a pretty bad smell. <laughs> but burning armpit hair. Oh. Here's the other thing. Ready? Go. Sorry, Bridget wants to play fetch. Um, I know when you're a teenager, determining who's your friend and who's not your friend can be a little dicey. You have frenemies and whatever. Anybody that takes a lighter to any part of your body, unless you're into that sort of thing, 
And even then, while you're driving a vehicle, not your friend. Um, not your friend. How, how does your brain work if you're in a moving vehicle? Without a seat belt, and you look over at the person driving the car, and you think, I'm going to light him on fire. Yeah, how's that a good idea? Just, what? What the? Uh, don't set the driver on fire. Yes, Sally, yes. I mean, there are, you remember, don't touch the driver. That was the big rule when we were kids. Don't, don't touch the don't. driver. Don't tug on Superman's cape. Don't whiz on the electric fence. Don't set the driver's armpit hair on fire. Do not set the driver on fire. Just look it over going, I'm going to set him on fire now. This shit works in an internet sketch, okay? Not in the real world. In the real world... Look at this fucking car! That fucker rolled! Look at that shit! I mean, honestly, there but by the grace of God. I know! You should all be dead, you idiots! Because no seatbelts. Roll the car. Nobody's dead! I'm amazed! Okay, Spike said, I didn't touch him, I just lit him on fire! Okay, that's taking the I'm not touching you game to the extreme. <laughs> I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. You're lighting me on fire! <laughs> that's that's perhaps past the point where that's a fun game. Hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville, and this is the Armpit Fireball. <laughs> this is just not a thing you do in a moving vehicle. It's Without us! It's not a thing you do ever, to be clear. Ever. Without a seatbelt. Nobody wearing seatbelts. But you know what's, oh my God, you know what just went through my head. Somebody's reading this and going, see, they didn't wear seatbelts. They're fine. Yeah. That's not the takeaway. That's not the take, just. Just the person that, that takes a lighter to any part of your person is not your friend. I feel like we need the little the more you know star. How do you know your friends? They yeah. don't set you on fire. Uh. Friends don't set friends on fire. Why did you set him on fire? I learned it from watching you. <laughs> when Firestar and Johnny Storm have kids. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh, well, Chris Evans was Johnny Storm. Everyone goes whack. Everyone knows waxing is the safer route to go when driving. Out of the archive, put that. Really, that's that's the Don't one. Don't wax and drive either. Don't just. I, I'm just. I'm trying to put myself in that mindset because there are times your mind will come up with a stupid thing you know you shouldn't do. And you don't act on it because it's a stupid thing to do. Right. <laughs> what? Where is your where is your barrier? Where is <laughs> there? There is a little traffic cop in your head with a stop sign, and a whistle going, whoa, that's a bad idea. Let's not let that one out. OK, there's a fine line between awesome and killed. Okay, I'm 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 going to give you the singing at the top of your lungs to want to dead and alive while driving. I'll let that one out. But setting the driver on fire, we're stopping that idea right here. Okay, that one that one don't get out. What do you have against singing Bon Jovi loudly while driving? Well, that's a that's a different kind of atrocity. Let's just mm -mm. that's America. <laughs> Fucking commie. You're proving my point. Uh, America. Just, I'm... Of the... You should be on a leash. 
If this is the kind of shit... No, because they just set it on fire. <laughs> this is why they made straight jackets, for fuck's sake. You just should not have access to fire. You've lost your fire privileges. As a I, human. I am completely baffled why no one is dead. This is just... If you had any luck in your life, it's all gone. It's all <laughs> gone. Yeah. You're not even going to win scratch and win tickets. You have rolled your 20. Yep. It's done. You've used it all up. That's it. Don't, you're not going to find, you know, yeah, sometimes when you go outside, there's like a penny on the ground. It's like, oh, I got an extra penny. Yeah, you're never, that's never going to happen again. Well, you will. But it'll be like a Babylonian chaos coin. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we'll pollute all that happens for the rest of your life. You're, you're done. You're officially, because Jesus Christ, you, you, you just used it all up. <gasps> you know what I bet this is? Huh. Viral marketing for Final Destination Part 56. Do you know they're doing another I Know What You Did Last Summer? I'm not kidding. I'm not even kidding. I know what you did in 1993. Is that what it's going to be called? <laughs> I know what you did after Party of Five. Uh... <gasps> they should do a crossover with that Lifetime movie she did. I know what you did with the client list. I would see that movie. Oh, Jennifer my Love Hewitt God. as a dirty massage therapist. Also running from a killer. Just maybe she massages the killer, gives him a happy ending, and he doesn't want to kill her anymore. I should write for Hollywood. Sadly, you would probably get that someone would buy that script. I have great ideas. So, yeah, uh, the first thing we learned this week is don't touch the driver is only a small portion of that concept that should be explored. It extends outward. It has many layers. <laughs> Don't you? You would think you wouldn't have to tell people not to set the driver on fire. <laughs> you think and yet, it? And yet, and you know, there's a lawyer somewhere in a Chevy factory going, "God damn it, Bob! We got him! We got him! We got to make the the fucking disclaimer bigger." D. A. Scott Jr. Tara just wrote, "I know who you did this so." <laughs> Let's make this happen. Uh, you learned this week that there are many wonderful places to go in the world. North Korea is not one of them, and especially swimming. You, Do you know, I actually saw a piece on CNN where they let a limited amount of reporters into North Korea. And one of the things, weirdly, that they made sure all the reporters saw was their brand new top of the line water bottle. I'm not kidding. This was a thing. Like, they gave all the journalists an extensive tour. Of the water park. Of this, like, top-notch five-star water park. Unfortunately, no one can be lazy in the lazy river in, in North Korea. So. You get whippings I mean, for that. Apparently, it is a great place to swim, is what I'm saying. No, any place that you have to cross a river with nothing but your arms and legs is not a place you really need to go. If that's the only means of getting there, maybe you should rethink your travel plans. That's all I'm saying. Well, you're going to do well in our future dystopian society. I am. We've, You'll be the first to go down in the Hunger Games. We've learned the many uses of mayonnaise this week. I'm not joking. It's really good for your hair. I'm not kidding. They think I'm trolling them, and I'm not. We've learned that if it has an Apple logo on it, people will pay money to look like an idiot. I, and you notice how that, that VR thing set up, it's, it prominently displays that Apple logo. So everyone can know, yes, you're an idiot, but you're an Apple idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> Hello, yes, I see the ball. Yes, want to want to show them how you play? Ready? Go. Do you hear that thump? Yeah. She's like a ten pound cat. <laughs> and she's gonna bring the thing back too. 
We've learned that the point of smuggling drugs is to take them from the place there isn't drugs. <laughs> yes. Not to take them to the place where there are drugs. No. See, that's, there's supply and demand, basic economics. If you're traveling to New York, you don't bring pizza from Kansas. No. That's stupid. The pizza's better in New York. You get the pizza there. And finally, we learned this week, only just now, in 2014, we're the, approaching 225, it's 225 years, uh, 250 years of this nation. Oh, you're asking me to do math. In 2016. I studied, I studied art. I studied art. I don't math. Well, anyway, in 2026, it's going to be 250, something like that. Yeah. 2026 sure. is going to be, we're approaching 250 years of the American nation, and we're just now locking the front door to the White House. Yeah. Just now! Which is funny, because we only have the White House, because it got burned down the first time. Maybe they didn't lock the door! So... You'd think that would have occurred to us by now. Yes! God no. damn it. The U.S. open door policy. Oh. Gatheim makes a good point. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name properly, but why don't they just make the I Fedora? Because then irony would be over. With the earbuds in it and the little screen that comes down. That would be killing. Trademark! 